What's up everybody? Welcome to the Sox channel. In tonight's episode, we're doing another stock market technical analysis update. But before we get into the charts, you know what you gotta do. Go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to the channel to follow along with all of my updates. First up, we have the ticker symbol SPY, which is the S&P 500 ETF. So let's go ahead and crack open this chart and see what's going on in this stock market today. All right, so with today's price action on the SPY ETF, we see that we went down negative 1.55%. And that means we are continuing our correction month of September just as expected. So if you're new or you just forgot, remember that we're expecting to go down in an ABC and we're definitely on that C wave down now, which is going to be the completion of this correction. Now, after a correction, we could see a resumption of the long term bull market. But right now, we're just concerned about how low the wave C is going to go before we see that bounce. Now, right now, we have this gap filled that was at $330. So let's go ahead and delete that gap. And that now leaves us one final gap left down here around $327. So we see that the price action came down to the top of our other gap and ultimately bounced and closed back above our previous support level, which is where the gap that was closed today. Now the price action is still very bearish and the trend is also still very bearish because we still have that 5 EMA and that 13 EMA going negative. And we also see the 20 simple moving average also starting to turn roll over and go negative as well. So the bearish trend is picking up and the short term trend of the bear market is starting to turn into a medium trend bear market. Now, if the 5 EMA will cross below the 50 EMA and the 13 EMA will cross below the 50 EMA, that will show further momentum gaining in this bear market. And that will show that the bears are in control of this market and they could drive the market much lower. But right now, I'm still expecting the SPY ETF to find considerable support around this $327 level. And we also have this $325 level in the, around the same area, which is the 0.236 Fibonacci retracement of the last bull rally. So it's very likely once we get into this range and close this gap that we could see a sizable bounce. And then if we form a lower high and we continue down, we will know that this market is in a bear market that might stick around for much longer than just a short term correction. So right now, this vertical blue line out here shows the end of the month of September. And I would expect to see the market remain volatile and continue to correct until very close to the end of the month of September. So right now, only being a few points off of our gap closure at three hundred and twenty seven dollars, it's very likely that we could close that gap as early as Monday and then we could see a bounce. And then we'll be looking to see if the market wants to form a lower high and ultimately close back down lower before the month of September ends. Now, if we start seeing this continuation of lower highs and lower lows, that will tell us to look out below because the bear market is probably going to prolong and we're going to see continuation of the downside. However, if we can complete this correction ABC pattern and then ultimately come back up here and form a new higher high and then see support test and form a higher low, we will then know that we are continuing that long term bull trend that the SPY ETF was in before this correction began. So short term, we're still expecting the price action to continue down and ultimately close these lower gaps. And then we'll have to watch very carefully on that bounce if we're going to enter into a bullish trend or remain in a bearish trend. Just a reminder, there's no reason to try to guess what the market's going to do. Let the price action and let the technical analysis tell us exactly what positions we wanna take and whether or not we're going to go long on this market for the rest of the year. We will know that because the price action in the technicals will tell us that the trend has reversed from a bearish trend to a bullish trend. You don't wanna to try to guess where the bottom is. Just like in a bull market, you don't wanna guess where the top is. So now that we are in a short term bear market, we don't want to make any guesses on where that bottom is and then throw too much money into this market before the bottom is actually set. Just imagine that the bottom was way down here in the 290s or the 280s and then you put your whole entire position on this 327 support level. So as the market falls, you want to be scaling into the market and you never want to go all in at a specific level unless you have a crystal ball and you know exactly what's going to happen in the market. So on the SPY ETF, look for further correction to complete that C wave and ultimately look for that gap at 327 to get filled and let's see if we're going to get a bounce off of that level. And if we do see a bounce off that level, let's wait to see if we could see a higher high form on this market. Next up is the NASDAQ 100 and we're looking at the QQQ ETF or the triple Qs and we have the very same story on the NASDAQ 100. We're expecting that ABC bounce and it looks like we're well within the C wave now and we're looking for these support levels at 256 and 250 to hold up. Now we did see the support level at 264 hold up today, 
but we're still closing below that 50 EMA and we still have a very bearish short term trend because that 5 EMA and that 13 EMA are very negatively sloped and they're starting to cross down to the downside. We also see that that 5 EMA is getting ready to cross below the 50 EMA and we also see that 20 simple moving average rolled over and it's starting to have a negative slope. So overall, the NASDAQ 100 is still very bearish and there's definitely a lot of selling because we see a lower price today on higher volume. So we continue to see that smart money, aka that big money, dumping their positions into any signs of strength. And that's why we're bearish on this market and we see that the price action and the technical trends are telling us to stay out and wait for these support levels to ultimately show that there's going to be a bounce before we go long on this market again. So with the NASDAQ 100, we want to see that 5 EMA go back above that 13 EMA and we want to form a higher high on this market before we become a bull. So right now we have to remain a bear and I'm not saying go short this market, but you should have cash ready to buy the dip when the time is right. Next up is the Dow Jones Industrial and we're looking at the DIA ETF. And the Dow Jones is by far looking the strongest of them all and has still yet to form a lower low. So while the Dow Jones is also in an ABC correction, the C wave is holding up much stronger than the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. And that is a great sign for the long term because once these corrections are over and we look to go long, it does look like the Dow is going to be leading the way. So right now the Dow is still finding support above its 50 EMA, which is showing a very bullish future is coming for the industrials. Now that does make sense fundamentally because the industrials have been hit the hardest because of the pandemic. And I would expect to see them have more recovery and more good news coming in the near future as things start to get back to normal. So the technicals are aligning with that theory and it does look like the Dow Jones is going to finish this ABC correction, but it's not going to hit quite as low of price targets that you would expect to see on the S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100. So right now, if the Dow Jones closes below that 50 EMA, we still do have these gaps we have to acknowledge at 268 and $264, but there's no guarantee that those gaps have to get filled. So we're literally just watching those levels as support in any event that we do break down and start heading down into those areas. So right now, the strongest support on the DIA ETF is $275 and the 50 EMA, which is just about a dollar lower. Next up is the VIX, which is our fear indicator. And remember, the VIX is supposed to go higher when the market goes lower. So today, all three indices were down and the VIX is also going down. So we're starting to see a divergence between the stock market and the VIX again. And remember, we also saw a divergence in the VIX and the stock market when the market was going up and we saw the VIX going up, which gave us a clue that the market was getting ready to correct soon. So right now with the VIX going lower as the market goes lower, that could be telling us that this correction is coming to an end very soon. Now, I wouldn't put all of my chips on the table on that just because of one day, but we are seeing that 5 EMA cross back below the 13 EMA on the VIX and we're continuing to see the price action close around the 20 simple moving average. And today the VIX actually closed below the 20 simple moving average and that bearish trend is continuing. So it does seem as though fear is starting to bleed back out of this market which could be an early indication that this correction is coming to an end and we're about to see a bounce in the stock market. So based on what the market's doing, reaching critical support levels and are ready to close critical gap levels and the VIX showing that fear could be leaving the market soon, I wouldn't be surprised to see a little more downside before we ultimately start seeing this correction coming to an end. So next up, let's take a look at some of the sectors driving this market and the financials are up first and we still see the financials struggling to get into a bullish trend. We have that price action still closing above the 50 EMA, but we're still struggling to form a higher high on the financials and we still have that 5 EMA below the 13 EMA. So right now, the number one thing for the financials is to hold up above forming a lower low because if the financial sector forms a lower low, it'll be officially in a bear market and that will tell us a lot about the stock market because the markets are not going to form new all-time highs while the financials are in that bear market. So right now, we're waiting to see if financials can hold up on this 50 EMA and we want it to break out of this consolidation and form a higher high to tell us that we're going to see new all-time highs in the S&P 500 this year. Next up is the industrials, and the industrials did take a day to cool off, and we are seeing them struggle to form a higher high. However, with the entire stock market selling off, that's not that surprising, and we do see the industrials still in a very strong bullish technical trend, with that 5 EMA still trading above the 13 EMA and the price action still trading above the 20 simple moving average. So overall, the industrials are still looking very strong, and I would be a buyer of industrials in any event that the stock market takes a turn and turns into a bull market. 
I do think the industrials have a lot more upside to go because they have yet to form a new all-time high for the year. Next up is the healthcare sector, and we do see healthcare still in that short-term bear market, but it did close above the 50 EMA today. So it's too soon to say that healthcare is done correcting, and it does look like there's more downside coming with the healthcare sector. We still have the price action closing below the 5 EMA and well below the 20 simple moving average, and we really want to see that 5 EMA cross back above that 13 EMA and get a close above the 20 simple moving average before we become bullish on healthcare sector. Next up is the US dollar and we're looking at DXY and we did see DXY still hanging around the 20 simple moving average area. So it's still at that inflection point and it's too soon to say if the dollar is going to break up to the bull side or break down to the bear side and it's really just sitting at a neutral point right now where that 5 EMA is right on the 13 and we're still trading right around the 20 simple moving average. So right now we just need to wait and watch on the dollar because we're not going to make any guesses. We're going to let the price action and the technicals tell us if the dollar is going into a bull market or a bear market and right now it's too soon to know. Next up is gold and gold is the same exact story as the US dollar. It's right at that inflection point and it's trading in a tight channel just building up energy getting ready for its next move. So right now I would be a holder of gold in any event that the dollar continues to weaken I would expect to see gold explode to the upside and all you need to do on gold is set a stop loss below the 1920s in any event that we're wrong we'll get stopped out and we won't lose a lot of money on that trade. Next up is Apple and we do see Apple coming down and closing one of our gaps so so that we can now delete that gap and we do have one more gap open on apple down at 96 dollars so this gap is going to be a support level for apple and we do expect apple to still go into that abc correction and i wouldn't be surprised to see apple close that last gap before resuming its bull trend so apple still closing below the 50 ema and you can see on the 5 ema and the 13 ema that it has a very bearish negative sloping moving average and we also see the 20 simple moving average rolled over and is now heading down. So that is very strong technical evidence that Apple is in a strong bearish trend and we would not be a buyer of Apple until we see a bounce and a trend reversal. Next up is Tesla and Tesla is looking like it's ready to reverse its bear trend and go back into that bull market. And this stock is by far the strongest FOMO stock that we've seen lately. With Tesla going back above the 20 and we saw that 5 EMA cross back above the 13, and we did test the 20 simple moving average as support and we did get a bounce off the 20 simple moving average today which confirms that the bullish trend is intact and that level of support held up so it does look like tesla is going to head back up to the upside and it looks like it's going to go back up and attack this previous high and ultimately try to form a higher high on the market so look for tesla to come up to the 500 dollars range and we're going to see if Tesla can break through that and form a new all-time high or if it's going to do a double top and head back down. So a quick update on Bitcoin is it's still held up on its support level and bounce and it's maintaining its bull trend closing back above the 50 EMA for three days in a row now. So Bitcoin's still looking like it wants to resume its bull market and I would look for Bitcoin to come back up and test the $12,000 level and if it could break 12,000, it should go back into an explosive bull market and head back up towards that $14,000 level. So just to recap on the SPY ETF, we did close one of those gaps that we still have open, but we still have one more gap at $327. So look for early next week to have this gap close and I would be a buyer at this gap and set a stop loss below this level because this should be a very strong support level. The VIX is also telling us that fear could be leaving that market and remember, if fear leaves the market, we could see new all-time highs. And industrials are looking very strong. So it would just take a recovery in tech and a continuation of that bull market to have very good things happen in the stock market. So technically speaking, we still are in a bearish trend, but we look like we're coming into a very, very strong support level very soon. So look for that bounce off of 27 and then we'll ultimately start watching for that new higher high and we'll look to see if this bear market can reverse and if we can go back into that bullish trend that we were in in the past that made us so many profitable trades. So have a great weekend everybody. Please remember to smash that like button on this video to help me out. I really hope these videos are helping you out and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can follow along with all of my updates. Thanks for watching everybody and as always I will see you in the next episode.